Hello and welcome to Susie B Living's What I Am Sewing in April. I'm a couple of days late, but it's taken me a couple of days to get my seeds sorted out. I thought I had them sorted out, but obviously I didn't. And I've been adding a few more extra seeds. So grab yourself a cup of tea, grab yourself a gin and tonic, grab yourself whatever you want because this is going to be a long video. So April is a really, really busy, busy sewing time. It's the busiest time for me. May starts to get a little bit easier again, but it is one of the busiest times and you'll see why because now we start to get into some really interesting um, veg to sew. Okay, and I'm in the greenhouse. Isn't that nice? I've been waiting to get into the greenhouse. Um, it's stopped raining, so I've kind of hidden myself here in the greenhouse because it's always nice to have lots of things growing around you to get you enthusiastic. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, instead of just um, telling you all the different seed varieties that I'm going to sow, I'm going to give you a... Um, an idea of when I am going to sow them through the month as well on moon phase days. I did this a couple of months ago and um, I think last month I swapped over and I didn't do it but I'm going back to this because ultimately my whole niche is moon phase gardening. So I am going to give you an, an idea of um, what is coming up in the month according to moon phases and what I will be sowing on these moon phases. So let's start. Monday the 1st and Tuesday the 2nd, which obviously has already gone, but if you do follow me, um, you will have already seen my Sunday night um, video, which covered Monday to Wednesday. So Monday the 1st to Wednesday the 3rd. So, and that is today. So Monday the 1st and Tuesday the 2nd, um, I'm going to repeat this again because this is going to be the whole month. Uh, were fruits days and my first lot of fruits that I sowed for April were the following. I sowed my first batch of this lovely, now I'm going to get up in between, when I've got pictures of the seed packets I will get up in between and show you. This is the first thing that I sowed and this is a little squash called sweet dumpling. It is what they call a winter squash or a winter pumpkin but I eat it either as an immature squash, so when the, um, uh, what do you call it, <clears throat> the skin is um, still soft. I eat it like that and then I also eat it um, when I cure the skin, so when I let the skin go hard. It is a wonderful little thing. Um, so I already, I, my first batch is going to go here in this greenhouse. I'm going to grow them up and around and all this kind of business in the greenhouse. So that's my first batch of, of little squash. It's not my main batch of squash. That comes later on in the month. That's my first thing. The second thing that I am sowing is my second batch of um, melons and they are the Minnesota midget. Now let's see whether that will focus. Yes. So these are the little kind of like little cantaloupe melons um, that are really tiny little things. Like I said, I've already sowed one batch and that first batch is either going to go in here. I think it probably is going to go in here actually. Um, and this batch is then going to go in the greenhouse on the allotment, which is a little bit colder than this greenhouse. Or it might even go into my emerald greenhouse, which is just across the way there. And so I'm going to do a next batch of those. I do recommend though these little um, Minnesota midget um, melons for the UK because they uh, grow very fast. You get some nice little melons and you don't have to worry about whether you uh, are late in sowing them. So that's those. The next melon that um, I sowed... Uh, that I don't have the seeds for, I left the seeds inside. 
unbelievable, is a watermelon and it's called Champagne. I will put a picture up on the screen because um, the seeds don't have a picture either. So they have like a yellow flesh. These I found have been really good in the UK to grow. I find them better to grow than Sugar Baby and actually I prefer the taste as well. So that's those. Uh, they are gonna go in the allotment greenhouse or in the emerald greenhouse as well. The next thing that I sowed was my next batch and my kind of final batch of peas for the summer. I have the Oregon Sugar Pod, which is a Monge 2. I'll put the picture up on the screen because I don't have a picture there. Now, I have got those in my raised beds here at home in the garden. They are doing beautifully. They are covered. Um, with polythene, but they are doing beautifully. But this is my next batch of those and my next batch of sugar snap. The last lot of sugar snap that I had, the rest of the peas, I think were a little bit too old, so I let them go. So I'm back on my fav, one of my favorite sugar snaps here. It is called Nairobi. It's by Mr. Father Girls. And um, I love these because they're stringless, they are mildew resistant, and they're really, really good um, sugar snap peas. So I'm doing um, those as well. So they are going to go in. That's my next batch. And like I said, I don't sow any more peas now until the end of summer. That's those. Um, the other two things that I sowed was um, some honeycomb um, cher cherry tomatoes. Honeycomb is an orange tomato. I'll put a picture up on the screen for you. And I find it much more superior in flavor than sun gold. However, I am sowing sun gold, as you'll see, at the end of the month as well. So I put in only two, uh, only two of these um, honeycomb. They are quite expensive to buy. They're an F1, but you get so much. You get a great yield and they're beautiful taste. So I sowed those. Um, and I also sowed some San Marzano. These are the cooking tomatoes. And... Um, they are my favorite cooking tomato. I'm also getting some grafted tomato plants that I ordered from Dobies, uh, but these I am just putting in as little extras just in case. So I've got these seeds from a German company called Bingenheimer. They don't actually um, uh, um, import, export, import to uh, the UK anymore because of Brexit but I go to Germany quite a lot so I picked these up and um, that's what I sowed. So that's the fruit stays on the moon phase calendar. That was um, Monday and Tuesday. So let me just put these in here. Okay Wednesday the 3rd which is today and Thursday the 4th of April are both root stays on the moon phase calendar. And I am sowing two things. I'm sowing some more Charlotte potatoes. So it's great that I'm here in the greenhouse because I'm gonna show you how I um, sow my potatoes again. I do them in these one litre pots like this. And then once they get really established and they're growing very fast, I then transplant them into my big pots here. So I've got a few more Charlotte that I want to do in pots before I then start sowing at the end of the month outside and they'll be going over in the allotment. Um, and I have here some Charlottes already. Charlottes take about 120 days to grow. So every potato has like a, a lifespan and Charlottes are, a hundred, excuse me, 120 days. And this is how I sow them now until, like I said, the end of the month in May. And then all my kind of main croppy potatoes, they then go into the, either into the ground or into, I've got a big raised bed over at the allotment. But until then, Today and tomorrow, I'm doing a few more pots like this. Uh, so that's those. The next thing I am going to be sowing are my main crop leeks. So I've already got two successions of leeks um, here in the greenhouse. Let me see if I can, oh, I better not pull that out. I've got some in my kind of DIY root trainers and they are called Hilari. They are a summer cropping leek. 
Um, my next lot of leeks are here somewhere, but I can't seem to see them at the moment. Uh, well, they must be still inside in the um, dining room. They must be still inside in the dining room. I have to bring them out. And they are my next lot of summer leeks and they're called Paul Bella. And this one, this lot of leeks that I am sowing now are my main crop leeks. So these are the leeks that I'm gonna get in the winter and into spring. And I do like Musselboro for this time, for that time of year. They're a really hardy, very reliable, really nice and big leek and they're fantastic. So I'm going to be sowing quite a lot of these. I'm going to be sowing about 40 and I multi-sow. So I put three seeds per cell and that is my main crop leeks. I don't know. Do you like summer leeks? I love, I love summer leeks. Okay. That's that. Next, Friday the 6th and Saturday the, no, Friday the 5th, this is all this week, and Saturday the 6th of April are both flowers days. Now I am up to date with all of my sowing of my edible flowers. And when I say edible flowers, I mean my um, broccoli calabrese or, or my um, cauliflowers. I'm up to date with all that, so I don't need to sow any of that. However, I've just received a big box of all my kind of summer bulbs and um, bare rooted perennials from Farmer Gracie. Farmer Gracie is a company in the Netherlands and I absolutely love them. I get most of my bulbs and all of that kind of really interesting stuff from Farmer Gracie. So I have got dahlias that I need to pot up. I have got some bare rooted perennials. I have some freesias. I've got some lilies. I've got some begonias and all of those are going to be potted up on flowers day at the end flowers days at the end of this week so that's my flowers um, okay so let's go on next week starting Monday the 8th is an unfavorable day there are two unfavorable days coming up this week and they are Sunday the 7th and Monday the 8th they are unfavorable because we have a new moon. And not only do we have a new moon, but the moon is closest to the earth. It's called perigee. And the energy is not great for sowing. So I do nothing on those days. I'm going to continue um, tidying up my... Um, patio here outside. I've got the patio near the back door to do. So it's great that I've got a couple of unfavorable days. Then cracking on that week. Um, let me just look what's coming up for me. So Thursday the 11th, Friday the 12th, and Saturday the 13th of April are all roots days again. So I am going to be doing some carrots and these carrots I am direct sowing now. I'm direct sowing them out into my raised beds here in the kitchen garden. Um, so if you want to do carrots and these carrots are kind of be going to be for late summer, um, then it's a good time. You can actually sow them direct now, but make sure that when you do sow them, that you cover them with something. So when I sow carrots outside, I, um, there's the other one. Yeah. I always cover them with fleece, first of all, because fleece keeps the moisture in and they germinate really fast. Then once they start coming up, I then um, put some mesh over the top, some veggie mesh, because I have a lot of problems with carrot fly here at home in the kitchen garden and actually over at the allotment as well. But I don't really grow carrots over there. Um, I don't have the soil for it. So there are two types that I'm going to be doing direct. The first one is this. This is my favorite summer carrot. It is called Sugar Snacks with an X. It's an F1. They're very, very long. They're very delicious and they're just yum, yum, yum. So I'm doing those and I'm also going to be doing the mokum again. I have um, a, a big tub behind you with some mokum in there and I will be doing those again and I don't need to show you a photo of that because um, they, they just look like a normal carrot but they are very good um, 
kind of summer, summer carrot as well. It's all about varieties, isn't it? So that's my carrots. The next thing is um, I start to now direct plant my potatoes and I'm starting to go into my main crop potatoes, which are actually second earlies. So I've got a big planter that we've just built over at the allotment um, and we're doing it like hugel culture. I don't know whether you know what that is, it's, but it's where the plant is quite deep and uh, there's no way we've got enough compost to fill this planter. So what you do is the bottom of the planter you fill with things like sticks and um, pieces of wood and we um, put in all our old brassica stems and we, and we start building it up and then we put compost on top. Well, these potatoes are going to go in there. I'm going to be doing some more charlottes and I'm going to be doing a new variety called Estima. This is a second early and this is probably one of our favourite potatoes to eat as a second early. You can also eat them as um, big uh, baked potatoes. They are absolutely delicious. Charlotte is on the kind of waxy side, so that's more a salad potato, whereas I find that Estima is an all-purpose potato. We use it for um, chips, we use it for wedges, we use it as baked potatoes, we use it in everything. It's a great potato. And so I'm going to be putting a few of those in this planter over at the allotment. The next thing I'm going to be doing is beetroot. Now I've already got quite a lot of beetroot. These are kind of, um, let's say extras or spares. I always do like doing spares and you'll see um, later on in the month, I'll show you in particular the spares that I do of certain things. So I'm just trying to find them here. <clears throat> Uh, so the first one, here they are. The first one that I do, and I do every single year, this is my red, my main red uh, beetroot is called Pablo. Of course, it just looks like a beetroot. There. So I'm going to put some more Pablo in because we absolutely love Pablo. So like I said, I've already got beetroot in my greenhouse over at the allotment, and I've got them here in a raised bed at home. The next one that I am doing is one called Betolo or Betolo. It's an F1. Um, I've heard a lot about this. I haven't grown this before, but I heard a lot about it and I've seen it a lot. A lot of people are growing it this year and it's meant to be really, really delicious. There's no picture of this, but it is just a, um, a round um, beetroot. I got it from Mr. Fothergills. Next one that I particularly like as well is called Detroit 2. This is just a little contrast to the Pablo ones. They're very nice. So I'm going to put in a few of those. I'm putting in some more of the Burpees Golden, which is my favourite golden one. You can also do Boldor. That's a really good golden one as well. And then I'm doing the white one, the Albina. I haven't got any pictures for that, but it's a white beetroot. It's not really... <laughs> You know, so those are my root sowings for Thursday the 11th, Friday the 12th and Saturday the 13th. All right, let's go to the week after. The week after that is the first leaves day that you actually get this month. I did give you a heads up um, a, a couple of moon phase um, gardening days ago about leaves. I said if you wanted to plant any leaves plant them then because we haven't got leaves until now. So Tuesday the 16th and Wednesday the 17th of April is your first leaves day here um, in April. We get another one towards the end of the month. So I am going to be doing a little bit more spinach my first batch of spinach didn't work. It all died off and I was not happy about it. My second batch of spinach is looking good. That has to go out into a raised bed here at home in the garden. So I am going to do another batch of spinach. I don't normally do spinach this time of year because it has a tendency to go to seed very, very quickly as we get um, towards the end of May into June. But there are two varieties that are meant to be no or slow bolt. 
One is called Santa Cruz. I haven't got a picture of it because the seeds are from moles. And I use this as baby leaf spinach. So I'm going to see whether it will bolt or whether it will go to seed or not. And the other one is a Japanese, an Asian variety, and it is called Mikado. Um, it has really, really big, big leaves and very fleshy stems. And again, this is a variety they say, oop, I didn't even... <laughs> close this packet properly. Um, this is a variety that is a no bolt, slow bolt. So again, I'm going to put those in and see how they get on. Um, the next thing, the next leaf that I'm doing is another batch of celery. Now, I deliberated whether I would do some more celery because the celery that I've got already, I've got the red stem celery and this one, this is called Utah, this celery. Uh, is doing really, really well. However, I really need some, I, I would like some celery um, for later on in the summer because you just never know, do you? This is where I start to do my spares, what I call spare um, seeds. So that's my celery. Then we go, we start the lettuce again. I've had a little bit of a break from lettuce, but I start all of my lettuce again and I'm not gonna do many. I just want them really um, for full heads of lettuce. I don't know whether you can, can you see that? No, you can't. I've got some behind me that are coming beautifully. Um, so the lettuce that I do in the summer are these ones. Uh, the first one is called Haflex. Um, I haven't got any in here, they're on the allotment. This is a great lettuce. This is kind of like, um, they call it incised leaves. So the leaves are kind of, um, zip. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> got little incisions in them. And this is a, um, like a ready, ready greeny color. This is a great lettuce. And these are Salanovas. So a Salanova is a commercial um, brand, a commercial type of lettuce that you usually, um, harvest them whole or you can harvest them by the leaf but the great thing about these lettuces are you they um, last for a long time and you get so many leaves from them they are absolutely fantastic they're quite expensive and as far as I know there is just one company in the UK that sells them and it's called Just Seed But I get them all the time. I absolutely love them. That is the first one. The next one is my favorite lettuce of all, which is called Navara. Here, I've got some growing here. So I'll just, um, I'll put a little overlay just so that you can see what that looks like here in the greenhouse. It is absolutely wonderful. I love this lettuce. Uh, and once, when the sun hits it, it gets really dark. It goes virtually black. So I'm doing some of those. I'm doing um, one called Excavo. Um, it used to be called Extranet, but it's, it's called Excavo. And this one is a... Um, let me think what this one looks like. Ah, this is another in, incised leaf, incisions in the leaves, but this is a green one. That's a really lovely one. I haven't got any here. The next one that I'm doing is soy rat. Now I do have some of that here. I think this is soy rat or is it barlac? No, this is barlac. So I haven't got, but it's very similar to this one. And I'll show you pictures of this one. Soy rat is a little bit darker. It's a little bit blacker. That's going to be going in as well. Then of course I do my favorite incised leaf which is called Riccia from Frankie Seeds love them and of course my favorite summer lettuce which is called Canasta love that so they're going in they're my lettuces then where are we ah yes so um, I start my first sowing of the year of chard up until now, I've been eating um, chard and perpetual spinach that I still have from last year here in the kitchen garden. It got hit by the cold quite hard and then it, all of a sudden it's just come good again. It looks absolutely fantastic. The perpetual spinach, I think I'm going to... Um, uh, 
pull out um, very soon because my other spinach is coming along and that will take over. Um, so, and I don't really sow chard earlier in the year because chard has a tendency to go to um, seed and bolt. If you, if you do it now, it, by the time we get to midsummer, which is when everything wants to bolt, it will pass through. And you should be actually, you'll be um, uh, harvesting stuff off this anyhow. So what the one I do, well, I always do a rainbow chart. Everyone knows what a rainbow chart is. I don't even have to show you that. Um, so I always do rainbow chart just for a little bit of, you know, interest. Uh, but these two here... This is one I did last year. So this is from Baker Creek Seeds. I haven't bought from them for a while, um, but this works really well here in the UK. So it's five color silver beet Swiss chard. However, my favorite of all is this one. It's called Barese. This chard is so superior to anything else. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's Italian and um, the, it, the, the stems are so delicious and soft. They're not really kind of hard like other chard is. And it just, it cooks beautifully. You can eat it raw. You can eat it as a spinach substitute. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So if you're gonna do a chard, do that one. It is absolutely wonderful. Right, that's my leaves day. So where are we at? Let me look. I think I'm going to continue actually. What I'll do is I'll put timestamps at the bottom so um, we can, uh, and I'll just continue this video. All right, let's go. Thursday the 18th of April is another fruits day only the one day. So if you didn't catch up with what I was sowing earlier in the month, um, then you can do that now. But I've got other things that I'm sowing now. So I do my first succession of sweet corn. That happens now. And I only like one sweet corn. There was a year back when I grew, <laughs> I grew I grew black ones, I grew multicolored ones, I grew all sorts of things, but I couldn't eat them. The multicolored one, I don't know what they call that, but the multicolored one, I think you can make popcorn out of. And I thought, what? why have I wasted my time doing this? Anyhow, there is one variety that I grow and I swear by it, um, and it is called Incredible. It's an F1. It's absolutely delicious. It um, doesn't get rust because a lot of sweet corn gets rust. It is the best, the best. So this is my first succession of sewing. I think I do, I might do three this year. I'll see how I go. Um, I, I do one at the end of the month. So that's my first thing I'm doing is my sweet corn. Um, the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do some more melons, but I add to the mix the melons. Um, I have, so I'm going to do some more, let me just look what I've got here. Yeah. I'm going to do some more um, of the watermelon, the champagne watermelon. I'm going to do some more midgets. I've, I'm throwing in this one. This is a great variety for the UK. Works really well. It's a much bigger melon than the midget um, and it's called Emir. You can get these. I've seen these plants at garden centers as well. And I know you can buy these as plants online. So if you don't get to sow these, <coughs> then um, you can get these online. Um, the other ones that I haven't got the seeds for yet because I had to reorder the seeds is I do one called, um, I do a honeydew. I always do a honeydew melon. And I do one called Malaga as well. That is very comparable to Emir. It's a very good um, melon, but I haven't got the seeds yet of those. So, um, so when I do my melon, I'll show you how I grow my melons. I actually do grow them outside as well, so, but I grow them undercover, underneath a tunnel. Um, so that's that. I then am going to sow my next succession of courgette. Um, and again, 
I have uh, grown many courgette varieties. Last year was a disaster. Last year I um, grew, oh, I'm so stupid sometimes. I grew all these varieties and that they were just rubbish. The only one that was good was the round one. And I don't even particularly like round courgette. Anyhow, so now I am growing only one variety of courgette and it is called Zephyr. And I do have a picture of that because it is my favorite. You can actually buy this, I think, from Waitrose. Um, there it is. It's a good looking courgette and or zucchini if you want to call it that and I'm doing another succession I've already got one succession going I think I've got six plants or seven plants inside in the dining room already in litre pots and they are going to be coming in here and also in my emerald greenhouse these ones now um, I'm thinking about putting some on the allotment and some in the greenhouse on the allotment as well. But I'm only going to do three because I've already got, I've already got a lot. But we do, we love courgette. Ah, yes, the next thing that I'm doing is my <clears throat> next succession of uh, climbing French beans. And the one that I do this time of year is the one that everybody does in the UK. It is called Cobra. Um, <clears throat> fantastic stringless bean. Um, you get great high yield as well. And these ones are going to go in the greenhouse over at the allotment. And I might even grow them outside the roof on the allotment as well. My first batch of um, cobra beans are starting to germinate. They are coming up. They are in the um, uh, south facing window in the dining room and they're already starting to germinate. They are coming in here and I'm going to grow them all kind of on the back wall here as well. So that's the beans. Right. Are we nearly there? We're in the last week of April. So Sunday the 21st, Monday the 22nd and Tuesday the 23rd of April are all roots days again. And I don't know whether you've noticed, but this is the third succession of roots days that we've, we're gonna have in April. It's a big month for roots. So I am going to do another lot of carrots, but my seeds haven't arrived. They're coming with the melon seeds and they are called Touchon. Uh, they're very similar to the sugar snacks, but they're a little bit more um, thicker and they're a really great um, carrot to take you from kind of July into August and maybe even into September, depends on how many we eat. I'm going to do them direct in the raised bed um, here at home. Then we're going to talk potatoes again. Uh, so these are my main crop potatoes and because we get so much blight over the road on the allotment, I am, I am growing the sarpos. The, so the sarpo potatoes, they're both red, these ones, are meant to be blight resistant and I am going to be growing them. They're also really delicious potatoes. So I'm doing sarpo mira, I'm doing sarpo una. Um, and I'm going to put in some more estimas as well. I've just had my um, sarpos come from Mr. Fothergills. They're beautiful. They're chitting nicely. So they will be going in on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, 21st, 22nd, 23rd of April. How are we doing? Right, let's continue. Friday the 26th. And Saturday the 27th of April are leaves days again. So we've kind of had like, we had leaves earlier and now we've got leaves again. So I am going to be doing, now I want to talk to you about spares. I always believe in um, over sowing or sowing extra of something that you really enjoy eating and I call them spares. And these spares um, are always, always handy 
because if you find that um, uh, an area opens up that you've got nothing to put in, you can put these in. If you find that things die for some reason, like they've been ravaged by a, I don't know, a squirrel or a rabbit or a um, or had some kind of disease or slugs, then you've got these spares. So I am doing three types of spares on these leaves days. The first is I'm going to do some more calettes. I have two successions of calettes at the moment going. I've got one um, in, actually both of them are in the um, south facing window in my dining room. One lot has already been pricked out and already in a container like this. Um, the next lot is in an 11 centimetre uh, uh, pot and that's going to be, I'm going to have to prick those out. And I'm just going to do a few more because I would say calettes are probably one of the our favourite, favourite vegetables other than beans. So I'm only going to do six. That's all I need. The next thing that we also eat a lot of all year round is red cabbage. So I'm going to be doing another six um, of the red ladero. And I think this is them here. Yeah. So I've got them already here. I've got some red drumhead and red ladero. Uh, but I just want to have a few extras. I've also got some um, coming up in the um, dining room as well that I need to prick out. And I just, I, all I want to do is another six of those just in care, case of spares. And then the other thing that I'm going to do as a spare is a, just a little, a few extra Brussels sprouts because you just never know um, what is going to happen with things in the garden. And we do love, I mean, Mr. N could eat um, a pound of Brussels sprouts, no problem. So that's my spares. The other thing that I'm going to be sowing are my, my next succession of spring onions. And these spring onions I've put in leaves because these are the bunching spring onions. These are not the spring onions that I did earlier in the year, which are also bulbing onions. For instance, I've got these here. So these are white Lisbon. These are very popular here in the UK, the white Lisbon. But white Lisbon, you can also let grow into a bulbing onion. So they're not like that. These are bunching onions. And I've actually got some here coming up already. I'm germinating them here in the, in the greenhouse. And these are guardsmen. They're one of my favourite bunching onions. And the next one I'm going to do is another um, spring onion or bunching onion um, that is a really good uh, summer variety called Entita. Um, I get them from mould seeds and they haven't arrived yet, but they are a great summer um, uh, spring onion. They don't, I don't know, they just tolerate the heat really well. Excuse me. Uh, and then I'm doing another, another lot of lettuce again. I'm doing the Navara, I'm doing the Canasta, I'm doing the Riccia, I'm doing some more Haflex, um, Hawking and Soy Rat, exactly the same as I did earlier in the month. But I'm, again, I'm not doing many, I'm only gonna do half a dozen of each. We eat a lot of lettuce. There's a lot of lettuce in this greenhouse. Um, that's that, and then, the last moon phase day z, in April are fruits days again. And that is Sunday the 28th, Monday the 29th, and Tuesday the 30th of April are all fruits days. So I now sow my first lot of dwarf French beans. Dwarf French beans are really quick growing. They're not like climbers. They can go in very fast and they grow very, very fast. So I am doing, I've got one of them here. The other one hasn't come yet. This is, um, this dwarf French bean is lovely. It's purple. It's called amethyst. Mr. Fothergills did well for me, didn't they? 
Um, great, great bean, very high yielding, completely stringless. Um, they, they mature very, very fast as well. Fantastic bean, really fantastic bean. Um, and the other one that I put in is called Sprite. Um, and that's another one that hasn't come yet. But again, very fast bean, um, just really fast maturing. I'm going to be doing 24 of both of those because we eat a lot of French beans. Okay, that's those. The next I'm doing some more tomatoes. And these tomatoes are now for the ones that I'm going to be putting outside. And I dot them around, I put them up against the wall, I might put them up against here in the greenhouse, but I put them somewhere where they're sheltered and up against a nice warm wall. And they are, so my outside variety of tomatoes are, <laughs> I'm just looking at all my things here. That are all a little bit, little bit nuts here. Um, yes, where are they? Oh, that's that one, that's that one. They go in there. Right, tomatoes. Hello, there you are. Here they are. Tomato, 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 tomato. Here we go. So they are, um, I'm going to do some more tumblers, first of all, but I've run out of seeds. Ah, it's a travesty because I don't know whether I'm going to get some. Oh, when I went looking for seeds last time online, I couldn't find any. Um, so I had to go uh, all over the place and eventually I found some. I think they were on Premier Seeds. Um, anyhow, I've got quite a few tumblers already going. But the other two that I do outside is Sun Gold, the alternative to Honeycomb. And this one is a lovely one. Let me get that picture here. This is a lovely tomato. This is called Tigarella. And I'm doing that as well. And they're great. They do really well outside, Tigarella does, or Tigarella. Um, they're like a medium-sized tomato. You don't have to wait for them to be like, you know, huge, like a beef steak. Uh, great tomato. Love them very, very much. Um, that's that. The last thing, and one of the most important things is, this, at the end of April, this is when I start my kind of main crop squash winter squash and uh, there are a few varieties that I absolutely love. Um, oh, by the way, there's a cucumber that I'm going to put in as well, which is this is the one that I do um, in the greenhouse over the allotment. It's a little larger than the normal cucumber that I do, which is the baby one. This is Passandra. Great cucumber. That's that one. So let's talk squash or pumpkins. If you want to call them that. Right, okay, these ones. So I always do um, Crown Prince, always. Crown Prince works really well in the UK. Um, it, it cures beautifully. It's, um, the flesh is delicious. It's just a great all-rounder. And I do a lot of those because we eat a lot of them. The extra ones that I always do that sometimes work and sometimes don't work well, I don't know, it depends if they're temperamental, is first of all is this one. This is a great looking squash. It's called Iran and it is absolutely delicious. Um, last year uh, I didn't get any. The year before I got two and they're massive. And speaking of massive, I always do a Queensland blue um, and they can be massive because in my opinion, the, the flesh on these are just delicious. But again, hit and miss with these because I'm not really sure we have the climate for stuff like this. And then the other one that I love is Delica. That's a beautiful squash and it really cures well. It lasts the whole winter. I've still got one. Um, to eat and uh, love it, love it, love it. There we are, I've closed my bag. <sighs> that is what I'm sowing in April. I hope that that has helped you understand, giving you kind of a, a heads up of what um, moon phase days are coming up and when I am going to be sowing. Um, like I said, if I don't get everything sown, like, you know, I said we had all these roots days coming up earlier, then I just kind of 
stockpile it and, and do it later on. But as I've said before, my number one thing on moon phase days is always, always sewing. So I try and get all my sewing done, even if I do nothing else. Um, so that's that. I will put timestamps at the bottom. So just to give you a little bit more of a hand of where you can skip ahead to and see what's what. And all of the seeds, all of the um, companies that I use the seeds from, I will list below as well so that you can just go and, and order them from them. Uh, and that is that. So thank you very much for joining me. My name is Susie B from Susie B Living. And I hope that you um, get your sewing done in in April because like I said this is a great month especially if you're in the UK so I am zone 8b if you're interested um, so if you're on the same kind of latitude as me then um, this is the time that we sew our stuff and yeah it's a busy very very busy month um, so thank you again uh, if you subscribe then you will get my weekly um, sewing schedule and growing schedule and what I'm um, weeding and what I'm transplanting I bring it out twice a week I bring it out on a Sunday night and a Wednesday night one is coming out tonight for the rest of the week um, and um, yeah hope you have a great season and thumbs up and subscribe. I've already mentioned that. All right. Thanks very much. I'll see you later. Bye.